Gamers, welcome everyone. This is Cutie Patootie, your favorite host. Today, we're gonna be talking, spoilers by the way, we're gonna be talking how I got wrecked in the tournament. It was a destruction. That being said, I'm gonna show you some results. We're gonna go through some games, not all the games, because some games are too long and I don't wanna make a two hour video as I always say. As you guys know, the group stage went pretty well for me. And then uh, I ended up in semifinals where I lost four to one. Uh, and you'll see some interesting things happening. And then I lost in the third place match as well, three to one. So we'll go through that. We'll go through my uh, thought process and all the good stuff. Now, before we get into it, uh, as you guys can see, uh, these sieves might be uncommon uh, that Poppy Pop played. So. I just want to get this out there because I know there's going to be people molding at me. Uh, you know, that I'm making excuses or I'm coping or whatever. I want to say I am a shit player. I am a top four player. I got fourth place, as you can see here. So I am fourth best player in the world. I want to say that both of my opponents outplayed me, outsmarted me, outgamed me in every single way. Props to them. And I do think they deserve to win. Uh, both of them uh that being said i was very confident for this tournament i haven't lost a longer series for a while i think the last tournament i won was the s tier in like september october november i don't know when it was and then there was a slap fest tournament about where was it about a month ago so we had this tournament about a month ago uh, where I beat louis demu and then marine lord in the finals i felt pretty confident for this tournament now I did take a step, uh, or, you know, I've been taking a step back from competing for, uh, not from competing, sorry, I'm not saying I'm retiring, but I'm focusing on streaming first. Uh, I'm not taking a time off, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And basically what happened is there was a patch about three days before the semifinals and the finals. So, yeah, there was a balance patch three days before the, uh, I think it was three days before the semifinals. And basically... Uh, most of the changes I thought wouldn't be a big deal. Uh, I thought, oh, that's fine. You know, some civs got buffed, some civs got nerfed, obviously. I thought that Ot Ottoman received two or three nerfs, but I thought they would still be pretty good, and the Ottoman matchups that I know would be pretty good did not turn out that way. I thought Abbasid change is so-so, but my opponent beat me with it twice. I, I don't remember last time I lost with Ab uh, against Abbasid, and I didn't practice it. I didn't practice against it at all. And then we had some of the other changes. I'm going to talk about the changes that happened in my series because I'm not going to talk about, like, you know, Malian because there was no Malian in this game. And then uh, one thing that happened in Mongol vs. HRE, uh, HRE got marching drills starting in Dark Age. So I said on my stream when I was reviewing VODs or a replay, sorry, that's probably not going to impact HRE in any way on land maps, except hybrid maps, because then in Dark Age, they're gonna be pretty good. So what ended up happening is we ended up playing Frisian Marches, and the moment the picks went through, I was like, oh, fuck. Because then I realized if I go for a Tower Rush with the new buff on HRE, I realized that if I push, I cannot retreat because he has 10% movement speed on me. So the moment the picks were locked there, I was like, oh, I'm fucked, uh, which I didn't consider. In most matchups, if I played, you know, JD versus HRE on that map, if I played China versus HRE, it wouldn't have mattered. But in this matchup, it mattered quite a bit, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. Like I said, I, th I think my both of my opponents played better than me. I just didn't really adapt at all to the patch, and I didn't really put as much, not effort, but I, I didn't put in as much time to figure out how good the changes are. Another thing is I practice Ottoman quite a bit. I practice stuff like Mongol. Uh, I haven't been practicing Abbasid, I'm not gonna lie, probably for a year plus because I just think it's been in a rough situation and Poppy Paw uh, loves playing Abbasid. So when the patch hit and Abbasid became better, the practice games that I've had leading up to the tournament, uh, I was playing with Louis and I was playing on ladder. Louis doesn't play Abbasid. So I had like two games against Abbasid on the ladder maybe against, you know, random opponent. I won and I was like, yeah, Abbasid sucks. Turns out it didn't because I got fucking destroyed. It is what it is. Um, there was actually a discussion about this uh, behind the scenes uh, because this happens pretty often, I feel like. 
Um, and sometimes you adapt to the new changes, sometimes you don't. This time, I, I well, I did not adapt at all. Um, but yeah, we've kind of had this discussion behind the scenes, like, why are we always getting the patches a few days before the playoffs? I, I just don't get it. Um, because we know well in advance when the season will end, right? We know, like, now we know when the season is ending. And the only thing I can think of is, like, having um, patches like this just before the finals or semifinals or quarterfinals will end up with sometimes... It will spice up the, the games, you know, because people might not be aware of what's happening. But I would really like... I think it's a... Again, I've said this in the past, not on stream, but behind the scenes, that we should either have the patch, like, before the tournament happens or after the tournament, not in the middle of it, because it can kind of... It messes up months of practice. It feels like it's kind of for nothing. We've been playing on this patch for, like, three, four months. And then semi-final comes, and then we play on a different patch. And it's like, if you haven't figured out stuff in a few days, you're fucked. Um, so I think that patches should stick for the whole turn for the whole duration of the tournament. Um, because if you look at it uh, this way, right? I played. So we had three days from semi-finals or from patch to semi-finals, and I played, let's say, 20, 25 games. There's 16 civilizations. Do you know how many things you gotta test? You gotta test, like, Mongol versus this, Atri versus that, Abbasid versus this, and you got different maps, and there's just not enough time for you to um, figure out what's good. And people ask me, like, when are you gonna make a tier list now that the tournament is over? And I was like, I don't know what's good. Um, so, I'll have to play a lot more to figure out stuff. Because, like I said, I thought from the patch notes that Abbasid won't be as good, but it seems it's pretty good, and a lot of people think it's pretty good as well now at the top level, so... <clears throat> who knows usually when the new patch hits it takes me about two weeks of playing to have some kind of grasp of like what's good what's gonna be the meta you know what people might be interested in, uh, in and so on and so forth um so this game was japanese versus jushi's legacy now this um as far as i'm aware there were no changes in, in this matchup so um i think this this one i played a bit too defensive that's why I lost. So he was Japanese, um, I was uh, Jushi's legacy. And basically he went Shinobi. And I think what I should have done, this was just a mistake on my part, bad play. I should have probably just made an archer range, made a couple of Zugan and counter push. But instead what I did is I made a tower and another tower. And then I focused on water. But by the time I was ready to push the water, he was already aging up. Um... He was already aging up, so I kind of had to all in on water and try to do something. Uh, he had arrow slits, so he had a pretty good build for this. Uh, where he just produced, or he didn't even produce Shinobi, he just got the first one for free. And then he just rushed castles. So the best thing I should have done here is archer range, push the gold. Uh, because he went super, super greedy. Um, just like, again, no tower, nothing. And... Uh, yeah, now when I scout the age up, I try to force the fight, but there's arrow slits, so it doesn't work, right? Because I can't wait on water, I have to, you know, go for it. So then here, I, when I realize what's happening, I got my Zuganu um, to try to deny the gold. Then we had a little bit of a back and forth here where I'm kiting, I'm sniping some villagers. I think I killed a good amount of villagers, actually, this game. Um, like a pretty, pretty good amount of villagers. But I think, yeah, he was probably selling food and wood. Because uh, he kept making units, but he wasn't mining. So I was like, what the fuck is he mining here? Uh, but yeah, I killed 10 workers, which was really, really good. Um, but eventually, like, he, you know, he did a push and uh, it did not work out for me too, too well. The water fight was okay for me, but it was, like, because I killed a decent amount of fishing ships. 16 killed, but now there's a problem with the counterattack because he has samurai that are castle and you know, I got just Zuginu. So now I'm in this situation where it's like I have to make units to not die, but by making units I can't age up. 19 workers killed. And I actually thought I was gonna be fine here. Um, because I killed so many workers on gold. So I was like, oh, I'm fine, you know, I'm fine here. But the units kept coming in. 
And I was like, maybe I didn't kill as much as I thought. But now looking at it, I mean, I was 18 workers killed to one. But I guess... I guess if you can hold a... Maybe if I managed to age up quicker, maybe I should have given up on water. I don't know. I don't know. But either way, uh, he continues pushing. I do age up in a little bit, but I end up losing the water. Not yet, but soon. Um, wow, this game was a lot closer than I thought. Here, I, I thought I was extremely far behind. Like, super, super, super far behind. But it was actually pretty close, which is kind of interesting. Looking at it now. Um... Yeah, interesting. Uh, but yeah, I lose the water here. And um, I try to do some pushing with Zuginu. I try to do some run buys, but it does not work. This was, by the way, the second game. The first game... Uh, the first game was actually pretty funny because I think I should have lost it. We played uh, Delhi versus Byzantines as we're, as we're watching this one end. Uh, we played Delhi versus Byzantines and I didn't end up doing any damage. And I ended up having like no food, no workers. I made a couple of keeps and he just didn't push for some reason. Uh, he just let me like boom up with keeps. It was like a really weird back and forth game. And it looked like I was going to lose throughout the whole game. And then eventually I managed to break out and somehow win. Um, if you want to watch that one, just check it out on AGC TV. Because it's like 15 minutes. I don't want to go through it because it's a bit a bit too long. But that was the, the, the first game we played I won. This was the second one. So uh, this one I lose. Then we move on to Lipani. And uh, this is where... Like this game I just lost was just... I just, you know, got straight up you know he played better um nothing else to say and then this one uh so for as long as ottoman has been out ottoman always always beat abbasid in any patch like all you need to do is um just you know make units and literally push and abbasid had very 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 hard time dealing with it now abbasid received some changes so for you guys that don't know uh the the fertile crescent got buffed which didn't impact this game because he goes military wing um, and I, I still can't believe that this makes such a big difference, but maybe it does. And I think I know why it does. So, uh, right now, <clears throat> fresh foodstuffs was moved to mill. Is that, that's the, the second change, right? There's no more changes for Abbasid? Um, so he goes military wing and he ends up pushing deer, uh, closer to him, which was pretty nice. Now, what ends up happening here is before, in order to get fresh foodstuffs, you would lose a villager because you had to make it in a town center. So you would lose one villager. Now, <clears throat> not only you have an extra villager as Abbasid, you also get the upgrade immediately. So you're actually saving a lot more food that you used to do in the last patch. So let's say you build six workers uh, before you get a second town center and fresh foodstuffs before. Now, you build six workers that are 35% discounted. So you save about, I don't know how much food, 80, 90, 100 food, whatever it is. Bonus on top of getting an extra villager. So it's a, it's a good eco boost early on, right? Now, that's not why Abbasid... Uh, that's not like why I lost this game. Um, Ottoman received multiple nerfs. Ot Ottoman received uh, military school got like six to ten seconds longer per whatever unit you were making um what else did they get nerfed they got nerfed like two more things right oh vizier point yeah vizier points you get them a lot slower now which is quite noticeable when you are in games where you're on a timer when you go for two town center builds i would say it's not as important but doing these kinds of all-in builds it is quite um Quite noticeable. Uh, great Bombard HP. Yeah, that didn't come into play. We didn't get there. But yeah, so this game, I was like... Uh, I actually wanted to get this matchup. Uh, funnily enough. I was like, okay, if he picks Abbasid, that's great for me. So I wanted this matchup, and I got this matchup. And I thought, I'm just gonna fucking, you know, go for it. I'm just gonna all in. Um, that's, you know, that's a thing we always did. We always uh, used to do. We always do. Um, so... Yeah, that was kind of my plan. Uh, it did not did not turn out quite as well. I actually thought I had zero chance at any point to kill him, which was quite funny. 
like it did not feel I I was in a position to remotely do damage uh, in this game, and you guys will see. Now, looking back, by the way, uh, the reason. So I saw someone ask me in the chat, "Why didn't you play your normal games?" Um, so if I knew more about Abbasid and about Abbasid and the new patch, I would have done two town center here. But like I said, this matchup has been so Ottoman favored. You just all in and you're good to go for so long. I didn't I didn't even think like why would I go to TC when one TC is how you play it. It's like think about it this way. Imagine Mongol tower rushing French your whole life for two years, right? And then something changes and tower rush doesn't work, but you don't know. You still do a tower rush, right? You don't go fast Asia with Mongol. So that's that's why I did that. Now, if I could go back in time, I would do a two town center, because the first game that we played, I think, was the only game where the game went late, and I felt very comfortable, and I felt like, you know, if I if you know if I did go to DC, I would have had a lot better chance, because I think Ottoman specifically is nerfed and Abbasid is buffed. But these changes are not as impactful as the game goes on. You know what I mean? So like if we both went to town center and then the game continued, I think the Ottoman nerfs wouldn't be as noticeable as it was in this game. Because here I am relying on, on uh, mass units to do damage and to win the game. So yeah, he did some good raiding here. He kept harassing me going around. Um, and now he just had so many units this game. It was crazy. Like, he had so, so, so many archers. There's also a, a recent... Uh, this isn't since this patch. This is since, like, a few weeks ago. There's been, like, this new meta where you actually just go full archer, almost. With a lot of uh, boom sieves. So instead of going, like... You know how we used to go spearman archer? People don't really do that anymore. They kind of go maybe a, a few spearmen and a few horsemen or you know one or the other and they just commit to full archers so right here he's on four archer ranges and you reach a critical uh, mass of archers which is around 50 and uh you can like one shot sipahi so that's been kind of brewing a little bit and i've noticed people doing it i haven't had too many games against it um but yeah, if you play 2TC and you play defensive, it's really good because you can kite into town centers and you can do a lot of damage before the fight even starts. So, you'll see what I mean here. Like, look, this is... This kind of looks scary for him, right? Because it's a lot of Sipahi and stuff. But by the time I engage into his army, I'm going to lose like four Sipahi. Maybe I should have... I don't know. I haven't played... Like I said, I haven't played against the mass archer ship. Maybe I should have used the... the ranged armor. Uh, Mechter point. But you can see it's so hard to... It's so hard to engage into this. So, yeah. Like, if you look at the army. Look at that. Like, similar uh, kill count. Right? 780 to 690. But I have way less units, which again, if you guys played Ottoman or you know the, the you know the previous patches, this is not you're supposed to have way more units than the opponent. Um, <coughs> even though my army value is higher, he has TCs to cover. So yeah, he's just chilling. Um, he had this nice tree line, so I could either attack here or here. So he can kind of kept kind of going back and forth and denying my sipahi. And I think yeah, now he ages up. And, I mean, the game's already over. Like, there's nothing I can do. He has 20 more units. Um, so, yeah. Again, looking back, I should, I would have gone for 2TC. If I had a better understanding of the the new the new meta, the new patch, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but I didn't. So, kick tablet. So, yeah. I reached castle. He reaches castle. And now he's going to have composite bow archers. Um, and if you thought it was bad until now... Well, they're about to mow me down. I tried to do some moves here. I knew I was behind. I was very aware. Um, I have veteran Sibahi. I think I fight here. Maybe it's not here. Maybe it's in a bit. Like, he's just chasing. 
Like, this is the funny part. He's chasing 20 Sipahi with 50 archers, and I cannot- I cannot fight that. Isn't that nuts? Look at this. I engage now, and I'm killing archers, but I'm actually losing Sipahi. Which is kind of weird. Check W. If you had practiced more, do you think the outcome would change that much? I mean, obviously more practice always helps, but it's not about the amount of practice. It's, would have I figured out in that three days what happened here? Because for me to understand this, what would need to happen is for me to play against a uh, player that plays opposite really well in this matchup to be like, wait, what the fuck? This is not supposed to work like that, right? Which is why you usually need a lot of games to figure these stuff, things out. And I mainly practice with Louis, and like I said, Louis doesn't play Abbasid, and I don't play Abbasid. So for Abbasid specifically, I don't think I would have uh, figured it out even if I had two more days, to be fair. Maybe I would have heard it from someone, but I wouldn't have figured it out my own. This I think I would have figured out if I, if I potentially played this matchup or just played more, right? So, like I said earlier, uh, pre-patch, this matchup was, um, I, I would say, it wasn't Mongol favored where it's an auto win, <clears throat> but you usually can get an easy tower rush without having to worry too much. So the moment we loaded in, I was like, oh fuck, the, the, the marching drills are in. So what does this mean? If, if I'm pushing... So obviously, if you're on opponent's side of the map, you have less units than the opponent, right? Because their reinforcements are quicker. So I thought, uh, so before you can push and if the opponent has more units, you can just go back. Um, and that's it, you're, you're chilling. Like there's nothing your opponent can do. They don't run faster than you. Now, the moment we entered, I was like, oh fuck, if I push and he has more units or I get caught, I cannot I, I can run but I'm gonna lose spearmen running back and if you lose two spearmen let's say he has 18 spearmen I have 15 and I lose two the game is over because he can kill my uvu he can kill my goal uh, also my spawn was awful this game not why you know wasn't the decider of the game but my uvu and gold are like billion miles away from TC um so that was a bit uh, kicked out also I, I fucked up I thought I left enough sheep back at home, but I actually ran out of food at 1.2, so it was pretty bad. So now, this is the thing. I cannot chase too much. If this is old uh, patch, I can actually just fight, and then whenever I see, oh, he has two more spearmen, I just move away. Now you can't. So now if I get a charge off, I have to run back. I cannot commit further anymore. That's the, that's the difference. And having this change... Might not seem like a big deal, but at a competitive level, everything matters a lot. So, if you look, his movement speed is 138, mine is 125. So, you cannot really commit anymore to these kinds of things. Um... Zdoto says, didn't seem to affect any other finalists. If you watch the the Marine Lord interview, by the way, spoilers. Marine Marine Lord won the tournament. So congrats to him. Uh, Marine Lord literally said that he thought that both Louis and I didn't have a good understanding of the new patch because the the sieves we were drafting were uh, not good for the current patch. Because I was watching the obviously I was watching the finals, and when he gave the interview, <coughs> he said he was practicing with Puppy. So when he was watching my games with Louis that we practice, he thought that the pick order we had on the draft was completely wrong, and he figured that we probably don't understand the you know the new patch and the new meta. And when Louis played against Marine Lord, there's actually some interesting things there too, because when Louis played against Marine Lord, I can quickly commentate on that series after. I'm not gonna go through their games, but I can quickly uh, show you what I mean by that. Um, oh yeah, so here I ran out of food, so I had to put all my workers on wood for a bit. This is where I do the tower rush. Um, I managed to fight here a little bit. He's already aging up, so I'm on a timer. Um, 
I managed to burn this down, and then I pulled three workers. So instead of pulling one worker, I had to pull three because I knew he was aging up, and he's gonna get the veteran, or not the veteran, the uh, hardened spearman upgrade. So I had to speed build a tower to block this. <laughs> so we do a little fight. I have to stay here because if I don't get this tower up, the game is pretty much done. I get the tower up, and now because he has the marching drills already. Uh, marching drills change, by the way, on land maps doesn't really have any impact because there's no situation uh, where HRE ages up without the Dark Age stuff. Where HRE ages up and you have like two spearmen and two archers. Um, and then you do something with marching drills. But if you have 13 units right now from Dark Age and then you make more units, the marching drill matters. Does that make sense? So, if this was, like I said, if I played any other Civ here, that change wouldn't have mattered on land maps. But, because it was this matchup specifically, where it's Dark Age into early uh, Feudal Age continuous fighting, Marching Drills obviously does help, right? Oh yeah, and Mongol got nerfed on the Uvu. I mean, they got, what, 70 per minute? It used to be 80. I, I can't say it's too noticeable. Like... You know, I wasn't like, ooh, I'm supposed to have 10 and I have eight, 9 spears, you know. It wasn't like that, but it's obviously a nerf, so... Yeah. Uh, so yeah, at this point... Um, weirdly enough, the game is already over. Uh, even though... You know, nothing crazy happened. He just goes around the tower. Like I said, he already has marching drills. He has no other upgrades, and I already can't contest. He's gonna burn my Ubu. Again, if I had, you know, stone or like here or something and I don't lose my Ubu, the game would go on. But because my gold and stone are next to each other, he gets the map control and then I'm just kinda... I'm just kinda fucked at this point. Um, he's just fully on producing units. He ends up burning this down, so he frees up his gold and stone. And if you look at the unit production, uh, you know, Atri has a big boost early on, obviously. The house. Uh, Atri has a big boost in economy early on because of the chapel, and <coughs> he just kind of overwhelms me with units. I thought, I thought here, I was like, man, that, that push is crazy, but he ends up winning. I had my, uh, some of my spears on the north trying to check for the gold, uh, but yeah, he just ends up pushing through here, and I think I GG right here. He had also some spears in my trade. I didn't even have gold to make traders. I made like I think two or three, and then the last game was of that series was again Rocky Canyon. I don't even know what happened here to be fair. So Byzantines is right now, depending which player you ask, like a top one, two, three, or four sieve. Uh, I think it's a really good sieve, and it recently got buffed as well. But what got buffed is the Hippodrome build. Because I had a loss with Ottoman earlier, and he picked Abbasid again, uh, because the rules of the tournament, um, which I'll talk about it later as well. I was like, I'm not sure what to go for. Like, do I go for Hippodrome? I should have gone for Hippodrome. Or I should have even gone to TC, by the way. Uh, but I think Hippodrome would have worked. So, um, I thought if I just go the Byzantine 1 TC all in, which is very strong, I'll be able to push through. And I'm not really sure what happened, but I felt like maybe I missed the opportunity to kill him. I don't really know. But it did not go my way. So he does military wing into 2 TC. Um, and I did Grand Winery. Now, again, maybe I should have gone for Hippodrome plus Longbows. Um, I think that would have been better. Or maybe Hippodrome into Javelin Throwers and then and then uh, Limitane as well. I think that might have been better. But again, I I didn't really get practice versus Abbasid, so kick W. <clears throat> and I think I don't know who the uh, like I know Marine Lord is really good with Abbasid. I don't know who else plays Abbasid. I know Wem does actually as well. But there's not too many top pros that play Abbasid uh, a lot. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm sick. Um, at least I wasn't sick during the tournament, so there's that. 
Maybe that's why I lost, actually. Because usually I'm, I have like bronchitis or broken leg or kidney stones. Now nah, I had nothing. So I got destroyed. Um, so yeah, he goes to town centers here. Um, God, I keep wanting to sneeze. <sighs> My nose is tickling. So here, I go Javelin Thrower, and I went Javelin Thrower Limit to Name. Um, uh, on the start, the game was pretty good. I killed, like, a Horseman or two. I killed a Scout here. So the start was pretty good. Like, everything was kind of going my way. I was getting my upgrades. I was chilling. I was like, yo, I'm gonna wall this shit off. I'm keeping my army here. You know, like, I'm waiting for the wall to finish so I don't lose the villagers. He tries to harass here. Boom, I see that shit too. Eh. I'll move my army. You know, the wall is pretty much done. And of course, as it happens, I move my army and the horsemen come in. And I'm like, fuck me. That's two villagers dead and I gotta send more villagers. I was like, alright. So let's wall that shit in. I didn't even see when these guys got in. And I still didn't see the replay when they got in. But there's more idle time for, for the berries. And my food was all over the place. So I kept like going from here to there to there. So it was like just going left and right. So here I get a good pick off. I kill like three horsemen right there. And I still thought I could just push this in. Now, <clears throat> I probably should have just pushed into the town center. Probably. I'm making a chiropractor over here. Uh, he's doing some harassment, and I have a shit ton of units right now. And I think I just pushed too slow, probably, this game. Like, I think even with all of this, <clears throat> I should have probably still been able to kill him. He's aging up with culture wing. I should have still been able to kill him. I end up killing some workers here, too. The trades are going pretty well for me. Uh, but I think... Instead of putting my whole army here, I should have pushed into second TC to deny gold and this food. And I should have sent some units here to deny the food income. So here, I see the age up is coming. I try to deny gold, I'm making more rams. And again, I still thought the game is going fine. And then, until it wasn't. Picked up it. But I think, yeah, I think this was my biggest mistake this game. I think this game had nothing to do with, like, patch or something. I think I just played the uh, shit. I think at this point, I, I was, like, um, not insecure, but I wasn't confident in playing against Abbasid. So I was like, I don't know if I can push. I had way more units than he did. Limitane could have just tanked the, t the second TC and I could have burned it down without uh, rams. But I think I was just like, oh, I'm not sure if I can win that. And I just didn't end up pushing. I age up here, but there's more harassment coming. And now my eco <clears throat> is not in a good spot at all. And he's got his units upgraded. He's making gulams. So uh, even though I killed 19 workers, it kind of doesn't matter. So he ends up just pushing through and, and killing me. There's just units everywhere right now. Like he's, just, he's just fully printing. And, um, and they end up GGing. So, yeah, I would say this game I could have definitely played better. I think the Holy Island game, um, I made some wrong decisions there. And then I would say the third and fourth game, um, I think he played better, but I definitely got, you know, done goofed a little bit. I just say by the, uh, but it is what it is. So I, I hope in the future, like I said, this is not the first time that we're getting like patches three days before the, the finals. It's happened before. But like I said, maybe in the past I was the one who adjusted quicker. And my opponents didn't. I don't know. But yeah, this time it did not work out for me. And I think, um, you know, I got wrecked. It is what it is. Not much to say to that. I think obviously Poppy Point Louis improved quite a bit. Uh, a lot of people ask me what happened with the Louis series. 
Louis and I were playing for third place. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to be honest, in my opinion, right? I have to say this so I don't get, uh, I don't want to get vilified for speaking about tournaments or tournament rules. I don't like third place matches. I think they're pointless. I think unless a third place is like you qualify for the next tournament or like, I don't know, something. I think third place matches are just pointless whether to play it or to to watch it. I think they're just like, when I watch a tournament, I don't care who wins the third place match. I don't know about you guys. Um, <clears throat> I would prefer if it's a if it's you know a number of games so they have a longer cast or something. I would love if the finals was like best of eleven or something, and then you don't have a third place match. Uh yeah, the difference was four hundred bucks. I was like, fuck it, <clears throat> we're not playing for I don't know what. <clears throat> I did try my best to win, but I was just goofing a little bit, as in like I w I wanted to do some fun strats for the viewers because for me that match is for fun. It's not. You know, we're not playing for a tournament win. We're not playing for some crazy tournament qualifier, whatever. So I was like, I'm just going to do some fun strategies and maybe create some chaotic games and stuff like that. I'm not going to go through these games. Game number one, we played uh, Delhi versus Byzantine. I went to Town Center Delhi. I could not try it. I got, I got beaten up pretty badly. Game number two. I went Abbasid Trade Wing against Ayubid, uh, and it worked somehow. So if you want to see trade game, you can you can just watch it on my profile. My profile is open in the game. Uh, game number three, I went JD Trade, and he went HRE. Did not work out for me. I lost that game too. And then game four, it was Malian against Mongo. So I wanted to do two TC with Malian, no matter what the matchup was. And he ended up doing a tower rush or wanted to do a tower rush and I defended and I was like fuck it I'm gonna make that second town center and then he had so many units and he ended up beating me so there it is that's the series uh I heard people told me after the series that casters were very confused with what I was doing they were like discussing if like the 2TC stuff is the meta if the trade is the meta and stuff like that um no, it's not the meta, I was just... I even asked my Discord before the third place match, I was like, is there any strategies you guys want to see? And then people were suggesting them to me, you know, what to try. So, um, again, the tournament ended. I am fourth best player right now. And again, I said it already, I want to say it before. Poppy Paw and Louis destroyed me. They played better than me. So shout out to them. And I always said this, and uh, in a way... It, I mean, I'm not happy that I lost, but in a way, it's good for the game that we have new people coming, you know, coming up. So Vortex and Lucifer didn't do too well this tournament. It's very good that we have more players at the top, you know, doing damage and, and pumping, even though Marine Lord did end up winning. So, but I think that's great. I think it's great for the game. The more people we have at the top competing, I think it's great for the game. So people can be more excited about other matches because, you know, in the past, you know, I'm, I'm here and Marine Lord's here. People are like, oh, Beastie vs. Marine Lord finals, right? And in a way, it, it's like, it's not good to just disregard everyone else and, and be like, oh, other guys have no chance. So the fact that now more matchups are interesting, like a matchup that I would love to see, for example, uh, would be Poppy Paw vs. Uh, Louie. I'd love to see that match to see how that one goes. Uh, by the way, so I told you guys I was practicing with Louie and Marine Lord made a comment in the interview how... Louis and I were kind of like picking uh, uh, weird sieves as first picks. I think Louis, let me actually check. I think he picked, yeah, Louis picked Ottoman and Mongol first and both of those sieves were nerfed. Again, I, I did the same thing, by the way. So Louis ended up uh, playing against Abbasid on Gorge. That game was not impacted at all by the patch because Louis went to Town Center versus two Town Center. Uh, so it was kind of like, you know. Then Lipani, uh, this, this game was sad as hell. Uh, Louis went Japanese Castle Rush and Marine Lord just walled and that that was pretty much it like the game ended. Marine Lord went 2TC and Louis went for Castle Rush it just did not work out. Mongolian Heights HRE versus Mongol which is the same matchup we played even though it's a hybrid map it played out in a somewhat similar way with like just masses of units and stuff 
And then Cliffside, um, this game Louis should have 100%, uh, in my opinion. But I think at that point when he was down 3-0, maybe he was nervous. He just didn't make, uh, he just didn't make good decisions after that. Uh, the finals, there were some interesting things happening. Uh, <laughs> the very first game of the finals, um, Marine Lord's internet crashed. So they ended up giving the win to Puppy Paw. I wasn't sure where the game was at at that point. Uh, then we had Holy Island. Then we had Lipany with a funny situation. If you guys haven't watched that game, I'll just say that. I don't want to give you guys any spoilers. But if there's a game you guys should watch from this series, it's the Lipany one. It was a really funny one. But that's the result. Marine Lord is the champion. So congratulations to him. Oh yeah, tournament draft. I think the map pool was was fine, was good. I uh, got no major mold. Usually I mold about the maps or like have some maps that I'm just like, bro, what is this joke? I think the maps were fine. We had a little bit of everything. I think the tournament system where there's no mirrors is great. The only thing I personally dislike, and, and this is obviously, uh, you know, it's a per personal preference. I think every player or viewer might enjoy something else. Uh, basically the way it worked in a best of seven, Instead of doing a best of seven civilization draft, you would do a best of five draft where you each pick six civs, but then you stop after fourth game and then you do a redraft, which I thought to be weird because it's like there was a lot of double matchups, you know, like you could win with Delhi and then in the new draft you can pick Delhi again, which I found a bit weird and maybe I don't know if viewers were confused uh, by it, like, oh, why is this guy playing this civ again? Uh, but that's just a minor thing. I, I personally prefer where it's like if it's a best of seven Each player drafts like seven or eight civilizations and you know what both players got and that's it uh, It was harder to follow the drafts. Yeah, I Like I get it and I'm sure viewers got it, but it is a bit harder to follow the draft Yeah, what did I want to say regarding the future tournaments? I don't know as of right now what's coming next regarding EGC TV, but first let me promote some other tournaments. So on March 30th, right here, March 30th, which is this upcoming Saturday, there is Rising Empires Weekly, thousand and a half uh, dollar tournament. Yeah, thousand and a half dollar tournament that I'll be playing in. Oh, we got a new map. I haven't played this map, Water Drake. Uh, then we got Cutie Patootie's own tournament together with Core. Core and I are organizing $1,150 Beast of the Hill number one. Uh, it's a gauntlet style tournament in which the loser of the match is eliminated from the tournament and the winner moves on to play the next randomly chosen player. The tournament ends if a player wins 16 games in a row or the prize pool is used up. So what this means is we're going to draw two players. They're going to end up playing uh, against one another. The winner goes next match, and for each match, I think the winner gets 50 bucks, and then uh, the loser is out. But if the winner wins with, let's say, Rus, the winner can no longer play Rus until, uh, well, until they lose, right? And when they lose, they're out. So the winner of the match can only play each civilization once. And this is obviously to prevent uh, players just picking, like, most OP civs. This is on 31st, so this is on Sunday. I am not playing in this. I am casting with Core, and we're gonna have some special guests as well. And also, we have longest win streak bonus for 100 bucks, and the longest broken win streak by a player. So if a player has a 10-0, they get 100 bucks, and the player who eliminates them gets 100 bucks as well. Uh, how can you join the tournament? Be a top 16 player in the world. Or top 20 player in the world. Easy. So, we have that. So, 30th Rising Empires, 31st Beast of the Hill. We got Energy Slapfest on 6th and 7th of April. We got the 2v2 tournament that I'm going to be playing with Core W. It's not a massive tournament. 227 bucks for first place on uh, 20th and 21st of April. We got Team Kings tournament. It's a 3v3 tournament on... That's in May. That's a while, a while, while away. And I think Mareika... AK Women's League, I think is happening. She told me this Wednesday or Thursday, I think is happening. I can't remember exactly. You guys should check her. Women's League playoffs is happening as well. Now, what did I want to say? Regarding the tournaments for... Uh, so all those tournaments that I just mentioned, I'll probably be playing them because they're one or two day tournaments. Now, 
Uh, the next EGC TV tournament, I don't know if it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one team tournament or FFA. I have no idea what they got planned. Uh, if it's an FFA tournament, I will probably play it. If it's a team tournament, I am probably out. Uh, because I, all the top players will have teams. Uh, and I don't really want to commit weeks of playtime to not have a, like, a good, good chance of winning. What I mean by that is, uh, every time there's a tournament, I usually don't stream it uh, because there's a tournament and because um, you know I have to put like delay and stuff on stream, which I don't I don't like. Unless I have like a good chance to win a tournament, I'll probably skip playing it. So that's the plan. If it's a one-on-one -on -one tournament, uh, I will most likely participate. Now another uh, thing is. Again, if the tournaments are six to eight weeks long, where it's every weekend and I have to skip every weekend of streaming, uh, and I cannot do like a stream with no delay, I might be skipping those tournaments too, unless the prize pool is a lot bigger. I don't want to sound like a greedy goblin, because uh, I love everything that EGC TV is doing, so I'm not blaming them at all. Uh, this is more on Microsoft, they should uh, give more money for tournaments. This is my job and this is my work, and every time I don't stream, I lose money, literally. So let's say I, 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 I don't stream six to eight weeks on the weekend. That's um, that's like 14 days of not streaming on the weekend, which is where you have the most viewership. And let's say I get top eight, I get $900. I lost way more than $900 in those 14 days I didn't stream. So for me, it's not worth it at that point. I've said this a while back, but I am a streamer first and content creator first. And I am not going to be taking time off to practice and then take time off the weekend to also do the tournament. So for me, unless the prize pools in the future increase, and again, I'm not saying this for EGC TV or, or Pesty, I'm saying this for Microsoft should cash out, um, then it's just not worth for me financially. And it's like, I'm actually losing money. Um, and the reason why I'm not taking time off to practice off of stream, I don't play any AOE 4 off of stream is because like I said, I wanna, I don't wanna ditch my stream for, for those kinds of things. I would rather practice and, and uh, you know, on stream, even though it's not good for me because obviously people are gonna see what I'm playing and the strategies. But stream is my priority. So if a tournament or anything else really causes me to lose viewership or not stream as much or lose money from streaming YouTube, I'm probably gonna skip that. So yeah. I hope you guys understand that. Like, I'm not talking this from like a goblin point of view. Uh, it just, it's my job and it's just financial stuff. That's pretty much it. Now, obviously, uh, you know, I, I told my stream earlier today, if, if there's a Red Bull tournament for $1 million, obviously I'm going to take time off of streaming to practice because that is life-changing money <laughs> that I can win. So obviously I would invest a lot more time and effort practicing. I think that tournaments might come and go, but I'll always have my stream and I'll always have people hopefully watching and, and you know enjoying the stream and videos and all that, where I can do one-on-ones, two v2s or nomads or whatever. Um, so that's why my stream is my pr priority. I'm 33 years old. I also can't compete forever. So I kind of want to look to towards the future more and like what's better for me long term what's better for Marek and me long term uh that being said i hope you guys tune into all these streams i hope you guys go on ebc tv's youtube and check out the vods if you're interested in any of these games tune into all these tournaments that i told you guys about if you're watching on twitch or on youtube come over to twitch and watch these tournaments support your players support me support whoever you want to support you're obviously gonna uh help aoe4 and help the game Make sure to tune in to my stream on Sunday. Check me out on Twitch. I'm streaming uh, a lot of Nomads. I'm 13 and 6 right now. Uh, we're playing Nomad FFAs pretty much every day. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one, brother. I'll see you in the next one. Twitch gamers, let's keep going.